Okay, guys, we're going to get started. Um, as always, thanks for being here. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's been a really tough day uh, for all of us. Um, a lot of folks in the organization have been uh, pretty emotional today. Um, but with that being said, we want to make sure that uh, you know, we give you guys the opportunity to you know, voice any concerns or, or questions that you might have. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to open the floor up for discussion. We don't have players or the coach here, obviously, today, so we're going to skip right over that section, and um, you guys can just begin firing away. Um, as always, we're going to have the microphone passed around. Just We want to make sure that everybody can, uh, can hear the questions being asked, and um, for folks who weren't able to make it out to the show tonight, we want to be able to make sure that they can go back and listen to it going forward. So, Before we get started, I have a bad cold. <laughs> So if my voice starts cracking or I start coughing, just give me a second. Who's up first? Or do you all want me to kind of open up a little bit of a statement? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, yeah. Um, as I'm sure everybody in the room knows, uh, we made a coaching change today. Um, it's probably one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, it's very emotional for me to talk to Leo. Um, very grateful for what Leo did for the organization. Um, we just looked at a couple of factors, and uh, after having a lengthy discussion with Bob over the weekend, we just felt uh, that was ultimately best for the team and the organization to move into a new direction. Um, you know, I know a lot of people were close to Leo. Leo was here every night uh, at every line change. He was a great ambassador in the community. Couldn't have asked for a better guy. Um, it's just unfortunate that... Uh, you know, looking at the ice and things that happened, uh, we just felt we needed to make a change. So um, there's that, and I'll be uh, glad to answer any questions uh, that anybody has. Come on. Exactly. There you go, Don. Yeah, appreciate it, Zach. Break the ice, Don. <laughs> Hard question to ask, but what the uh, – coaching change is that indicative of a style of play or a lack of performance on the ice and what what could we expect to change or what is the expected change we're looking for um it's kind of a three-part question i guess best way i can answer the kind of the the basis of the decision um you know this isn't indicative of leo i think leo was a great coach i just think that um some things obviously weren't clicking uh in certain areas um Last year we got off to a 17-3 and two start. Um, we finished the season 27, 24, and five. Uh, we've started the season uh, two six and two, um, and you know we just felt like something had to change. Uh, there's plenty of talent in that locker room, um, but something's not clicking. Um, and that was one of the things that we felt like needed to change. Um, as far as style of play, uh, I think with Ryan, you're not going to see a drastic style. Uh, change per se it's going to be uh, conversations we had today we're going to start at the bottom focus on the details right we're going to pass and work on our power play work on our shooting work on the little things try to fix those and then expand into maybe some system changes and stuff but we don't want to you know come in and overhaul the system completely and it just throw a wrench into everything if that makes sense and if that answers your question Last time I was here, you had a lot of questions for me. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty to say about Spectra. Huh? Plenty to say about Spectra. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. It's hard. Um, wasn't something that was done uh, easily, and it wasn't a knee-jerk reaction to anything. We took a long, hard look at a lot of things. And, um, you know, like I said, it's really hard. I mean, I got really emotional. Leo got emotional. Like, it was, it was extremely hard and um, something that just needed to be done. Did you happen to notice the camaraderie wasn't there with the players? Um, I wouldn't say the com camaraderie wasn't there. We've got a close-knit team. It just, you know, for lack of a better term, I know it's, 
not the answer that everybody wants to hear, just things were not clicking. Like uh, our power play, we were, we're ninth in the league in power play. We're tenth in the league in penalty kill. Special teams win games. You know, you look at Peoria, you know, they're functioning at a high level and look at where they're at. It's a direct correlation. Um, and so, I mean, last year we struggled on penalty kill, power play, things of that nature. So, you know, yeah. Joe, Brian, anybody got questions? I won't bite, I promise. You can ask me about anything. It doesn't even have to be about Leo. You can ask me about anything. Yes, ma'am. Kathy's got a question. Uh, Bill, do you have the, mic- the microphone? Yeah. Oh, can you please ask it again, please? The interview from yesterday, how do I, how do I get to hear that with Timo? The, the Creek segment. Yeah. Um, is Tony here? I think he left. Oh, okay. All right. I don't, I don't want to throw the guy under the bus, but I did uh, request that he send me a, a, an archive of that file, and he hasn't done it yet. So the ball's in his court. Um, I'm going to send him a reminder, but uh, I'll be sure that we post it as soon as we have it. Yeah, absolutely. For those of you wondering, he did do a great job again. Yeah, so um, not just on the line change, but on the Creek show as well. You guys heard it live? You did? Okay. <laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Now, people were wondering why there's a Y in his name, and sometimes there's not a Y in his name. Yeah, that's um, it's strange, isn't it? It is, because yeah. I've got government documents that dictate both. Right. One says Y, and one doesn't. So Tony's theory is that he's a Russian spy. Well, I'm not going to comment on that. You get in trouble with that these days. <laughs> Uh, Sports Center did a commercial on that with Semyon Barlamov and Alex Ovechkin a few years ago. Maybe we can do something like that. Anyone else have a question, guys? It can be a comment as well. First Jersey auction. Yeah, sure. So the uh, first Jersey auction is going to be this Saturday. Um, we're going to be wearing our camo. Our camo jersey, yeah. Um, I know the awareness is pretty low right now. We've uh, hit a snag with um, getting our promo- We've filmed the promotion that we're going to do for it, a video. Um, we really like it, but uh, we're waiting on the approval from Mossy Oak. Um, they're not dragging their feet or anything like that. It's just it, it's hard with the time frame that we were given from the time we got the jerseys to the time that we had to go and film the commercial and edit it and things like that. So as soon as uh, we get the green light, we'll reveal them on Mayhem social media. But they will be auctioned, uh, as always, following the game on Saturday. Charles, I believe. Get some feedback what did you there. do? It must be the crowd mic there. Yeah. Um, so uh, I believe Charles yeah. is going to be there, right? Yeah. So, Charles will be back. Yeah, so Charles Olson, um, he's going to be running the auction after the game on Saturday. It's going to be in the lobby of the Centerplex, as always. Zach, you got a hard question for me, man? <laughs> no? Would you mind asking into the microphone, yeah. please? Sorry about that. Like if the coach now and the team doesn't do any better mm-hmm. and they're not meshing, mm-hmm. what then? Um. There, so Ryan's been named the interim head coach. Um, over the next few weeks, we're going to evaluate some things. We are taking coaching resumes. Um, and we've started that process. We didn't want to get too far down the wormhole um, with things sliding. And then, you know, we're three weeks down the road and we're starting this process. So kind of where we're at right now is Ryan's going to give it a go. And um, we'll evaluate where we are in a few weeks and um, we'll go from there. So kind of a short leash? I wouldn't say a short leash. Um, I think things are there. Let me be honest with you. I think Ryan's an excellent coach. He is very um, cerebral in his approach. Um, I think y'all are going to be pleasantly surprised when y'all see him this weekend. Um, and some of the minor changes, I mean, just in practice, we were talking about this afternoon, things we're going to be doing uh, starting tomorrow. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say a short leash. Uh, 
I think he's going to be fine, and I think he's going to do well. Um, you know, just we're going to see how things play out and go from there. Um, Ryan is uh, a little nervous, a little excited for the opportunity. So, um, yeah. You can ask. Oh. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm the most shy person in the world. You wouldn't know it. I hate being the center of attention. So, nah, you're not going to get me in trouble. I guess since I got the mic. Um, since Ryan is going to take the head coach position mm -hmm. as of right now, would we be pulling in, like, another player to stand in as the assistant coach? Or would it just be, like, he's solo right now? Uh, right now, no. What we're going to do is um, – we're going to lean on P-Rog, our captain, a little bit to work with the forwards. Ryan's still going to work with the D, um, change some things up. Um, it's hard. I'm trying to think of how to put stuff because I don't want to – I think the world of Leo and, and all that, I don't want to, you know, talk bad about him. But anyway, it just some things needed to change. And Ryan is an excellent guy uh, off the ice. Um, he, he very much respects the chain of command. Meaning, he's not going to go up. He'll make a suggestion, but he's not going to say, hey, no, this is how we're going to do it. He has some ideas of some things he wanted to change already. Um, it was just the timing, and so now he's got that lead way. So he'll still be working with the D, getting them in order, still working with the forwards. Practice is going to be a little bit longer. Um, but it's gonna, I think it's going to be good in the long term. you got to follow up. You get her the mic. All right, with the new coach taking over, does that mean the lines are going to change instead of it being the same players playing the same lines and we have players sitting out that could be on the lines and benefiting us? Are they going to be on the ice or are they going to sit out still? That's probably um, a coaching question, but I'm sorry. No, I can answer it. Uh, you're going to see line changes. You're going to see personnel changes. Um, conversation I had with the guys today uh, – just being blunt, um, tired of seeing um, the way I put it. I had some words I don't need to say publicly. Um, so I'm trying to. I'm tired of seeing a uh, lackluster effort on practice, on shifts in the games, and things away. Like you're going to give 110 percent, or you're not going to be here. It's as simple as that. Uh, full season, like it's. We're here to win a championship. This isn't a game uh, to us. We're here to make this a profitable business and win championships. That's our end goal. You don't want to participate. You want to take time off. You want to be lazy. You think you're better than than you know the next guy beside you. Then you know we can find you a new home, and I'll find somebody that wants to be wants to be here. Yes. Does anybody have any office questions, marketing, uh, Spectre questions? Uh, I never thought Joe, Joe starts salivating when I said that. I just opened up a. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Uh, I guess Spectre's here for the long run. Um. I will tell you that there was a vote tonight on an extension. Um, I actually got a call, and so I walked out earlier from Dave. It got tabled by the commission. Um, so to answer that question, I'm not sure yet, but I know that it will be on the horizon soon. Tell the people vote, and at the parking lot, it's dark at night. Uh, talked to Dave about that today, and I believe somebody reached out to Spectre today, and he is going to make sure he addresses that tomorrow. It was later in the afternoon, and um, they were getting ready to go ahead to the commission. So, But I did talk to him. It was kind of a hectic day this afternoon, as I'm sure you all can understand, so my conversations were short and sweet.
along the lines of, you know, if you guys can renew a contract or not, <clears throat> how are you feeling about the uh, fan attendance this early in the season? We still have the college football going on, high school football just wrapped up. But it seems like to me, and I didn't go back and look at the last numbers, this year's attendance is better than previous year's attendance at the same time. Um, Not much, but some. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I'm frustrated uh, with it. Um, guess I'll pull my heart out a little bit here. Uh, something I think about every night. Um, I know I read the fan page and I see things and you know, I think some people think that it's kind of passive for me, but it's absolutely not. Um, I have one goal, and that's to make my owner money, take my job very serious. Um, yes, yeah, these guys, there's days where I just, I'm down. I don't want to talk. Like, I want us to be successful. Um, so building off your question, I'm a little frustrated. But it was kind of a thing that we went into that me and Bob talked about when we were making our schedule. It was, do I pick up Thursday nights down the road? and try my luck on a Thursday night, and we've all seen attendance on that. Or do I pick up a Saturday and go up against college football and do what I can to attract from that? And it's just that thing you have to weigh. And, you know, we kind of gambled on it this year to, to do on the front end, and we're going to look at the numbers and the financials. And we got a Thursday. We got one Thursday one this year. One Thursday. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. And we got some promo ideas. Um, and we'll evaluate at the end of the season and see – what we do next year, but that's kind of why we have so many games on the front. But yeah, it's frustrating when the attendance, you know. I'll tell you all a funny story. Just kind of fill some time here. Uh, me and Kevin used to get in arguments, Kevin Kerr, um, about attendance on the front end. And he would go, Blair, I don't understand why we're not getting more people. I was like, well, Kevin, Florida's playing Georgia this year. He's like, I don't care. They, I don't. I don't understand. They're amateur athletes. We're professional hockey players. And I was like, well, Kevin, uh, football's a way of life down here. Kind of like hockey is for y'all up there. That's football down here. And he would just, you know, we would just go back and forth, back and forth, and it was hilarious. I've had to learn that one the hard way, too, being from Chicago. Um, you Yankee. Yeah. It's the first time I've been called a Yankee in my life when I moved here. Um, I, I argued that I wasn't from New York, and, yeah, it didn't matter. Um, you know, back home, we don't, like, college football just isn't a big deal. You know, we have Northwestern and University of Illinois, which I don't, I couldn't tell you the head coach of either of those teams or one player on the, either of those teams. You know, we care about the Bears. And you, don't, you don't know who the head coach is for Illinois? Nope, nope. Lovey Smith? Oh, yeah, former Bears coach. That's, yeah. the, only, that's the only reason I know. So that's kind of my point. Um, so for, you know, not just people in leadership positions here, but players as well and staff members when they come here and realize the uh, religion that is college football, um, it's a culture shock for everybody. And it's, you know, um, a challenge for us from a marketing standpoint for sure. But their biggest problem is they don't want to spend ten dollars for a beer. You know, it's Spectre that's killing your attendance. Oh, you're talking about you have tickets through your sponsorship that you can Raffle give off. away, and the problem, yeah, okay, okay, and I got you. People don't want to take them because, look, I don't want to spend that money at the concession stands. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, to be honest with you, so to explain it, how Spectre works, I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble for this one, but it's fine. Um, so Spectre's contracted by the city, right? Uh, they employ people, obviously. Um, how they make up their money is either through rentals of the hockey team, concerts, and stuff like that, or through concessions. The parking goes back to the city. So one of the reasons why you see a little bit higher concession prices, you know, they have to make up salary and stuff like that. Otherwise, they're losing money. The city's losing money, and it's kind of counterintuitive. Does that make sense? No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Because the fans want to come in and watch hockey. It's still a budget. Mm-hmm. 
it's a budget cost when you want to take your kids to a game. And then the kids, you know, they want popcorn and they want a hot dog and they want a pretzel. Mm. You know, parents want to take them there for the experience, but the kids want to eat. I got gotcha. you. You know, and it, it's, it's hard for some of these parents. Um, I understand what you're saying, and I will, you know, I know you're probably tired of hearing this, but I'll talk to Dave tomorrow about it. And I know we've got some nights planned. Uh, how many was it? Like, oh, for the one, two, three thing? Yeah, the one, three, five. A, yeah, a lot. Yeah, we got a lot of, ten. we got like 10, 15 nights, one, three, five, so... Uh, there'll be like rotating items for the dollar, two do- or three dollar hot dogs, and the five dollar twenty four ounce jingling beers. Um, they'll be rotating. That's going to be something that we rotate in and out. Uh, and if that's successful, then we'll. I'm going to push them to implement it more and more, and that'll be my ammo. If that makes sense. The, they, but when they charge you concert prices, do you mind, Janine? Sorry. <laughs> you know, people are going to pay a lot of money to go to a concert. They have the money to go to the concert. They're going to pay the beer and, and the wine and the liquor prices. But when you go into a hockey game, it's a lot different. And same thing with the, the monster truck. They're there is a family. They should at least give family prices. Spectra needs to look at a family price as opposed to a concert price. Mm-hmm. After the schedule change from Military Appreciation Weekend that we had in March, they were really great about working with us in terms of getting some deals that would, you know, not necessarily benefit them as much monetarily, but would help us put some butts in the seats a little bit better. Um, so I guess just a tip of the cap to them on working with us mm-hmm. in that well, regard. At the end of the day, I follow what you're saying, and it's a battle that I fight. And... It's a catch-22. No. Yeah. Between a rock and a hard place with Spectra. I, w- I will tell you one thing about Spectra. And I know it's hard to believe. More people in that building is good for them. It's better for them. They make more money. Um, so they're open to these ideas. And uh, you can reach out to the front office. In all seriousness, feel free to call the front office and somebody, either the GM or AGM, will call you and talk to you. And they've been, one thing I will say about Dave Aiello and Brian and I've worked with SMG. I've worked with uh, the Marriott before. And I've worked with Spectra before. As far as the GM, he's very open to listening to fans and patrons, and he does not – an assistant doesn't call you back. He'll call you. So definitely voice your concerns uh, in all seriousness, and, and he'll help. I want to piggyback off of her. Um uh, what I noticed, like concessions, mm-hmm. me, I eat before I go and I use my cup. What could possibly maybe help with that is souvenir cups. For instance, I went to the Knoxville game to support mm-hmm. Macon. They have um, souvenir cups. They're kind of, they're a little bigger, but they're sold as a regular drink. And then they also kind of like twine in their team with their concessions. So honestly, I didn't even know Spectra was in charge of Knoxville until I actually looked around. Maybe if we could get something like that in the concession stand, it could help. With I, w- I wouldn't mind paying for a souvenir cup, but I know my friends, they're, they're going to want something with making on it. Mm-hmm. So if they go to the concession stand, maybe a cup or something to kind of pump our team that way. Um, we can definitely do that. We did it in the, we did it a few years ago with just this white cup that had mayhem on it. It wasn't really an impressive cup. and For all intents and purposes, it was a waste of money, and I didn't. it's a whole other story. Anyways. We can do that. It's uh, our responsibility to do that, and I'll definitely talk to Bob about it. And um, you know, we can definitely look into uh, getting some souvenir cups in. Like some, I've seen Knoxville, the hologram cups. Actually, um, their F and B lady, Tammy Prescott, who's the head of F and B Food and Beverage up there, was in Macon right when they took over the account. So we kind of implemented some of her ideas, and we tried to do some of the Knoxville stuff. Some things didn't work. Some things worked well. So. I'm, I'm definitely open to suggestions and revisiting everything. I really am. I want to make it the best fan experience I can for all y'all. Yes, sir, Mr. Cleeton. Hey, since we're talking about Spectra, what's the chance of them fixing the hole in the roof? <laughs> that is... Uh, it's good. Uh, they, so, I don't want to get into too many details because I'm guarantee I'm going to tell the story wrong or tell the, the facts wrong. Um, there's an escrow project out there with the city right now. Um, and basically there'll be an overhaul in a lot of things in that arena. 
uh, the lighting would uh, become all LED lighting. The parking lights uh, would be under that. The hole in the roof would be fixed, new dehumidifiers, a new ice plant. All that would be lumped in. Um, been passed by, I want to say, the, the committee and commission. They're doing a few uh, background things before it goes before the whole commission, and then it'll be voted on. Um, but I would suspect, a little insight for you, if y'all can read between the lines, I would suspect that come next season, you'll see a lot of differences and a lot of improvements. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> Did you get any negative feedback from the players over the situation with Leo? Um, no, I didn't. They, uh, no, I said, you know, uh, Ryan's partly to blame for it, and y'all are partly to blame for this, meaning we could have went and played harder. We could have done a lot of things different, but we all know that we kind of built it in. Um, I don't know if it was Leo's voice. I mean, I don't know. They didn't want to respond to him. I, I don't know what the case was because I really didn't talk to the players. They were very somber. I wouldn't say they were negative. They were very supportive of Ryan. Me and Ryan held a one-on-one -on -one meetings with them afterwards to listen to their concerns and you know talk to them about whatever they have going on. Um, nobody talked bad about Leo, and everybody built up Ryan. Um, and they, you know, I think you're going to see a lot different team come Friday night. It was very somber and. Um, I'm excited to see what the work ethic is going to be tomorrow morning. Uh, just to bring it back to the players and the team, is there a status update on uh, Josh Couplinger? Is he, I mean, because he hasn't been playing a whole lot. Um, yeah, I mean, there's quite simply it's we put the, we put who we think is going to give us the best chance to win that night on the ice. Um, I know with Josh, he started out really hot last year and uh, scored a bunch of goals the first few weekends and then left. And, you know, unfortunately, things just haven't been clicking yet for him. And, you know, we got a new fresh start and we'll turn the page. And, you know, you'll probably see him this weekend, I would imagine. Um, and then we're going to evaluate from there. How about our goalie situation? Yeah, <laughs> Um, what do you mean? There's Elaborate. There, the, um, sorry. We've got two goalies on the roster right mm -hmm. now. There is a Ukrainian goalie that we signed, but we haven't seen. Uh, three-game contract expired, right? Porter. So no, we never got um, to see him play. Oh, that Ukrainian kid. Uh, did Dennis Tariq. Dennis. Saruk. Saruk. Uh, yeah. He went to Jacksonville. He opted not to come here. He went to Jacksonville and for lack of a better term, gave us the middle finger. And so, good luck, bud. He got cut from Jacksonville after one game. Wow. No, it was uh, – it was uh, all these daggum Russians and Ukrainians. I can't remember the names. It's like Tessaruk or something. Tessaruk. Tessaruk. Yeah, that kid. Anybody else? Do you, do you have anything you want to ask me? <laughs> but not, I not, here, not here. Not okay. here. <laughs> um. They're going. Um. Just stay tuned. That's all I can tell you. There's, um, I was a little disheartened that the vote was tabled tonight. And uh, once that happens, then we'll evaluate everything from there, if that makes sense. I don't want to give you too much good information yet. i got to leave you hanging a little bit, McCliff. I, 
I would I would put money on hockey if I was you. If I was betting, man. All right, guys. Anything else? Questions, comments, concerns, complaints? You guys have been refreshingly cordial. Do you have a question? Um, maybe not a question, but okay. um, um, no. <laughs> Just kidding. Oh. I really was happy and encouraged to hear about some positive changes coming over the next season, year, in the future. Um, I think. I speak for a lot of us to say that clear communication about the positive changes as well as maybe some not-so-positive changes like having to say goodbye to Leo um, would just be really beneficial, especially in this time of a lot of change. Clear communication and a clear um, vision of a positive future would just be, I think, very encouraging for us all because we kind of feel um, a a little lost right now, a little shocked so yeah, i certainly understand that i mean i be honest with you i'm very optimistic about our future as a team here um extremely optimistic of, of our long-term future here um as far as staff and stuff of that nature uh i tell them all the time this is the best staff i've ever had i'm damn proud of everybody that works for me um i know that leo leaving is, is hard um but i definitely think there's gonna be some good that comes out of it Stuff with some hardships, but you know I think Ryan's going to get a chance to shine. I think we're going to see a winning product on the ice. I think morale is going to be up around the board uh, with a couple of wins, some bigger crowds, and you know things are going to be better. Did that? I think that was a good. Uh, yeah. I okay. I don't know if you guys went to, like, an old folks' home last week and gave out a bunch of tickets, but there was probably about 50 or 60 old folks sitting next to us. Mm-hmm. You guys got to get them back. They were the best fans in the world, and they were spending money. I Chill out. Was that your? Relax, relax that. There you go. That was his doing. Was that his group? I guess it was. I almost they, came out of that chair over there. They yeah. knew hockey, they were spending money, and they were funny as can be. Yeah. Did you hear that, Zach? Was that your group? We'll get them there this weekend. Right. Get them back. I'm going to stop keying in on middle schools so much. Yeah. <laughs> Will do. All right, I'll well, be honest with you. One of the things I've always said is you get somebody out in a hockey game, guarantee they're going to fall in love with it exactly. if they see one. Exactly. <laughs> I believe it. So funny. While we're talking about groups and getting people to the games, have you guys thought of maybe going north with it? Like, for instance, I teach in Monroe County, and my kids, of course, they go. Some of them do, but there used to be, like, two years ago, there pe- the guys would go to the schools, and they would, like, promote reading or something like that with the kids. I've got students in my classroom that would love to go but either can't afford it or they don't have the opportunity to go because of the t- – like, is there a way that we could go to the schools that are – like, because Monroe County touches Bibb County. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a 20-minute ride from the Coliseum. Zach, are you taking notes or are you texting there, buddy? <laughs> Text. Oh, uh, there you go. Okay. Uh, I'll get Zach on that. Uh, Zach's community relations person. Mm-hmm. Uh, we definitely need to get Monroe County. I mean, because um, we've got a lot of kids that are excited and they would love – my fourth graders would love if they came in there because they see pictures in my classroom of past making players up on the walls mm-hmm. and all this stuff because I talk about it all the time. I show them videos, pictures. There's posters. Like, they they know they know about it, and mm-hmm. some of them have seen it. Some of them had it. I mean, last year I bought tickets myself to give to kids for good behavior. So I can't do that for my 127 I have this yeah. year, but, hey, <laughs> Um, in all seriousness, get with Zach, um, and he will – he's the one that schedules all of our community appearances and stuff, and he'll get you taken. Mm-hmm. We do field trips at the rink after practice. We do we do a lot of stuff. Uh, right before the season started, right before the season started, it was actually the day before our home opener, we had a group, uh, Angela Watts. I forgot what school it was. Do you remember? Jones Elementary School. They came out. Um, they had – 
probably 50, 60 kids skating on the ice that Thursday. I had to just work it out with uh, Jeff Butcher, who's uh, the director of operations at the building. But, um, you know, for I think it was $300, they rented out the, uh, the ice for an entire hour. They were out there. They were having a blast. I, there were probably, what, 60, 70, 80 kids out there. Um, the guys were out there. What's that? The guys were out there. Um, I thought I had a few out there. Did we? Although, I don't uh, know. I was out there. I was out there. Uh, they thought I was a professional, which I couldn't be further from it. But that was a lot of fun. You uh, say there are options, and mm-hmm. we would love to have y'all. Yeah. Is there anything against the players, um, like giving skating lessons to kids? Um, like a side yes b- side no. bar. The yes part of that is I cannot be involved with it whatsoever. If you talk to that player, you and that player work out something. A lot of them run camps and stuff. Not my business. Go for it. Um, but I cannot facilitate it as it would be seen as a legal compensation from the league. Some shoveling money around if that makes sense. We are going to have a lot of post-game skates this season. Um, that's something we're looking for to this weekend. Yeah, Friday and Saturday we're doing it. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And just to prove I do read the fan page, I have brought it up to Dave and them about a season ticket holder discount on skates. Uh, I'm trying to work that out now. Cool. Are we going to get any pocket schedules? I get asked for those all the time. Um, probably not this year just because it's so late. Um, we can... If you, if you need some, we can get you – we can make some smaller schedules here in the office and, and get some stuff out so we can get them out. But probably not pocket schedules just because by the time I order them and they get here, it'll just be too late and a mute point and a waste of money to a certain degree. Uh-huh. We got some newcomers. Do you all have questions? <laughs> it'll be on YouTube tomorrow. Yeah. What, about 3 o'clock, Alex? Uh, something like that. Anything else, guys? All right. Well, um, we really appreciate how cordial you guys have all been. Uh, like I said before the show started, it was a, a really tough day. Um, Blair can attest to this. Really, everyone in our organization was, um, just like you guys, uh, pretty shocked and upset. But at the same time, we're confident what, for uh, what the future holds. We really believe in, in Ryan Michael as a person as an, and as a coach. And um, and I, like Blair alluded to earlier, I think we're going to start to see good things happening here in the in the immediate future. So we're very look, uh, very much looking forward to what's to come in the next uh, few weeks here. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to have another show next week, uh, same time, same place. Uh, we're going to get right back to it. Um, Blair, as long as it's all right with you, I'm going to have Ryan Michael up here for the first time. It certainly is. Haven't, okay. Haven't talked to Mike's about it yet. Um, he's not exactly the most... Well, what's the word? I can't wait to see your fi- his face when you yeah. tell him. <laughs> uh, he's he's camera shy, but I'm, I think he'll do fine in front of a crowd of people. Um, Take but, it easy on him. Yeah, <laughs> for his first one, because he wasn't even on the show as a guest last year. Um, but we'll have we'll have Mike's here, or Coach Michael, next week, um, and then we'll have two players along with him. Haven't decided who they will be yet. Uh, before the news broke, I plan on having Larry Smith with you know camo night being this weekend. <laughs> Um, and then Josh Kuzno, um, I think they'd still be good guests for next weekend, so I'll get in touch with those two guys. But uh, in the meantime, if you guys don't have any other questions, we're going to wrap the show up. Again, thanks so much for being here, and as always, we hope to see you again next week. Hope you've enjoyed your meals. Thanks, guys.